we're down to the water lake level, which Mark has graciously put together a slide presentation that a lot of people, uh, it's my understanding that they didn't even know where the weirs were and exactly how they operate. So he has, uh, we've been kind of sitting on this for a while and it's perfect timing for Mark to run his slideshow and I'll try to narrate the best I can from here. Basically the weirs, well, there's two of them on the lake, one's on Swanee Beach and the other's over on Crane Drive. And we're gonna show you exactly where they are as this goes on. But basically there are many dams they are, I don't know, between three and four foot wide. And they are set at the uh, court ordered level, which happened back in the mid sixties at 873 feet above sea level. Uh, the one where, as you can see this green dot, it's, it's just past that peninsula on Swanee Beach. And if you drive slow on the right side, there's a kind of a, like a parking area and there's a tree that leans out and uh, that's exactly where it's at. You can get maybe two cars in there. And it, uh, it's on, on that little finger of the lake and it goes through a culvert under the road and you can actually see a little stream there. It kind of goes through uh, what we call a water course, which is, I, from, as far as I know, it's kind of like a wetland. It doesn't look like any place you'd want to be, uh, snake and insect wise and things like that. I, I, I certainly wouldn't want to wander in there, but um, it, uh, it meanders through, uh, the wetland and there's actually a culvert that it runs through that was part of the Swanabeck farm back in the day and uh, eventually it gets across Torrey Road down by Grove Park and Torrey and eventually gets into uh, Lake Panema. Both, both, both weirs end up the same place. So yeah, here we are, Crane and Torrey Road intersection. If you're heading northbound on Torrey, you'd take a right on Crane, right or east. And that's the other location is that big barn house there that uh, Hammonds redid years ago. So you go, you can go veer off to the left there, but you want to go straight on crane, stay on crane. And there's a culvert just before the condo on the right. When you see that condo, that's the opposite side. That's the right or the south side of crane. And it's actually the weirs actually on the opposite side. But you can see, can, can you go back just for a second, Mark? I don't think so. Okay. Well, <laughs> if, if you... If you, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Look, you can see that that's, I think that's Golden Pond in the background. And the weir drains through a culvert under the road into Golden Pond. And then there's an outlet on Golden Pond where it ends up going down along Torrey Road and eventually across Torrey Road into eventually Lake Panema. Okay, go ahead. All right, that, that's the weir, and <laughs> you can't really see it, but again, there's kind of a parking spot there. There's this, I don't, I don't know, this, uh, um, this sign here, orange sign, uh, but if you pull up in there, you can kind of pull it along there and get mostly off the road, and uh, I know last year there was some poison ivy around here, so it's, uh, I, I saw it, and I don't know if Susan got into it, but that's that's actually kind of what the weir looks like. It's a steel metal box and we'll get a better view um, in the next slide, I think. Yeah, yeah it's, it's actually, theoretically it's adjustable, but I, I just was talking with Tom Jones, our, our uh, Genesee County drain engineer that's responsible for surface water drainage in our area. And uh, I asked him why, why they had these adjustments on it. He says, it, when they build them, it's easier to set them 
and then adjust after they get it in place. But all right, here's here's a view showing um, you really it's hard to see the actual weir. You can see that round rod and there's a, a dark piece of steel under there. It's kind of black looking and that's the actual weir. So the water at this time, which was gosh, sometime last summer, wasn't it, Mark? Uh, yes. Uh, I don't remember exactly when, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to guess sometime maybe in July when the water was over the weirs, the, the water is actually running out. You can kind of see the weeds there. Um, and also notice at the top, there's some reeds um, that beavers had uh, made a nice little dam in front of this. Um, and when the county came out and cleaned it up, they just threw the reeds up on top there. But uh, uh, I know there's something on Facebook about the beavers over near this, and uh, they're not over there now because there's no flow. That's that's their uh, when there's a flow, then they they try to dam it up and make a bigger homestead for themselves. But uh, right now, that's that wouldn't be the picture if you went over there right now. The water would be below the blade of the weir. So this is where it actually drains out that picture of the condo before. Um, this is the condo. I think you can just see a bit of it on the left corner of your screen, but that's where it flows through kind of a wetland ditch area and into that golden pond. And that's just, I don't know. I don't, they put that barrier up there. I guess I'm not sure why uh, keep the critters out or, or whatever, but uh, it, it can get plugged up fairly easy quite frequently recently because believe it or not, I, I know a lot of people are concerned about the low water and so am I, but um, believe it or not, last spring, the water was high. <laughs> yes. And so we've kind of gone from one extreme to the other in a year. Okay, Swanee Beach and South Long Lake. So if you're uh, running... Um, West on Swanee Beach towards Torrey, uh, you take a right. If you're running west on Long Lake towards Torrey, you take a right on Swanee Beach or north. That's the intersection. Uh, you're looking at South Long Lake and Swanee Beach. And that's why I explained that there's kind of a leaning tree there. This is where, and you can see the box uh, in the back there, which is the uh, weir structure. And there, there's a, a drain, a, a culvert for the drain, for the culvert that runs underground across the road, weir structure in the background. And there's a damage on the culvert uh, nobody seems to care about. Um, it should be fixed, but I guess we have to beg the road commission to do that. For some reason, the drain commission isn't responsible for that. I don't know if it's because it's in the road right away or what, but uh, it doesn't seem to hurt anything, but it has caused some erosion from the runoff that should be going up through the top of that grate, but it just goes in there. So there we are measuring the weir with a, a yardstick measuring how high the water was above the weir. And I think at that time it was like six or eight inches above the weir. The weir is down here. It's below water, yeah. And these, theoretically, these uh, uh, wheels. wheels should allow you to raise and lower the weir. Uh, it should, um, but it was my, it was my understanding that they set those back in the 60s, and I don't think they've been moved. Um, some, Plus, they're chained together. Well, they're locked, yeah. Yeah, they're, you can't just go down there and adjust Did, them. Although, do you have the key? No. <laughs> I've, I've got a grinder. <laughs> and, and, and believe me, in the past, um, I, I shouldn't mention this, but I will because it's part of the history. Uh, people have figured out ways to add plates to that <laughs> and uh, raise it up a uh, six inches or whatever. But those are always taken off, so they don't last long. 
the top is the top is theoretically theoretically 873 to both sea level but i from tom jones he claims there's like an inch difference between the two weirs i don't know if one's a little high and one's a little low or something but they're <laughs> close. they're close in in drainage terms i think they're and that's where it drains across and as i mentioned earlier into a water course which the water course, even if it's in private property, cannot be altered to disturb the flow. And when we had that high water last year, as my understanding there, and there you can see the water is above the culvert that goes under the road. And as my understanding that uh, that last beaver dam evidently was on private property. And uh, I guess the owner didn't, want the drain commission going on that property but when they checked with their attorney he could not stop them from going on the property but before they did the dam got cleared away so now before they got the, rid of those dams it flowed but very <coughs> very slow i mean you couldn't even could hardly tell if there's a leaf or something down there is barely moving but when it drains well, it, it flows quite well. Okay, that's the last slide, Jim. Um, at this point, I would say open it up to questions. Yeah, let me, let me, before we do this, let me just say this network or this weir system was put in, like I said, in the mid 60s, um, back when a court ordered lake level was set at 873 feet above sea level. It's my understanding that, and, and I've been, at my house since 72 and it's i i can actually remember the water being and i'm going to guess at the year because i don't really remember but it was probably like 74 the water was lower than it was in november and it was i wouldn't say common but i, I know at least three or four times i would have to move my hoist in the you know, when it got into August or September, out further so I could get my dock, my boat off the hoist without having to power it off and on. So this, it's my understanding that prior to the 60s, people would have to move their dock out 40 foot or 50 foot, depending on how the drop off was. But it's not uncommon, and I'm not saying I like it, but I'm not sure it's somewhat of a fluke i guess i'd like to think we're going to get some april showers and make up some of this water but the fact that we had such a mild winter and a well dry fall i mean we had i said last meeting but a lot of you weren't there we had a lot of rain predicted and when i look at my weather i, I keep scrolling it up and uh, it tells you how much rain you got in the last 24 hours and how much projected or when the next rain's projected days or hours or whatever. And a lot of times you'd have like 80% chance of rain. And then I'd look at that and we got 0.05 inches of rain. So, you know, we just didn't get enough rain in the fall to uh, replace. And it's my, also my understanding, the biggest loss of water is through evaporation but then you, you also have a lot of people that uh, you know water their lawns off the lake so I, I'm I'm not sure we're able to uh, we're, we are looking at options as far as filling the lake um, Matt at our last meetings suggested they are on a lake that um, they had a well that they put in to maintain the lake level but this hasn't really been a problem. We haven't experienced this problem for at least 50 years. So not sure where we're gonna go at this time, but boy, if somebody in the audience has a good answer, we're, we're open to investigating it. And, and we, are, we have investigated the uh, water issue.